beloved, wherever you are, this is Good Friday. And a happy Good Friday to you. As you sit together as families under lockdowns, on this very historic day where it has never happened before that believers not meet on this commemorative day. But today we find ourselves in our houses where we are in lockdown for the main reason that we not spread the corona virus which has turned pandemic. Government in my country acted responsibly. Exercising leadership in the hour of great need. But all in all, God is good. And today as we celebrate the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose account is recorded in all our four Gospels, this day it's very important a day in the life of the church because without the death of Christ we wouldn't be having a living church but with the death of Jesus Christ, the death that he died to sin once and for all, where he did not remain dead, but where he was raised to life on the third day, and at this is a great time in the life of the church. For where there was death, life was brought forth. And life has now been instituted. And as I will be speaking with you today, about the shed blood of Jesus Christ. It is important to give you a narrative background of his death. The death that was prophesied the death that has a lot of shadows to it in the Old Testament. Where two shadows stand high above the others. And which is that of the Passover and that of atonement which indicated what would come in the future time like this. Jesus Christ, beloved, He came into this world 
to be born and to die for me and you. Oh, that's how many lino ori a baby we a drobe a fair chifera nena boni. As a gift from God the Father. Such a be what you welcome to Mukoti. The Father who manifested his love for mankind. Kotibo sumbe da orufu no rabo kamutu. That his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ, he gave. Ori murabo mbebya e te yeso Christo, womuneya. That whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And when the time of his perils came, no justice was done to this man who gave justice to man. But he was took, he was arrested. He was accused and charged. But Pilate indicated that he said nothing wrong with him. So that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And uh, the shadows be brought into fulfillment. That the lamb of sacrifice should be the one without blemish. So was your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Arrested, he underwent a harrowing night. Arrested, he was abused. He was bitten. His blood was shed. It is the blood I will concentrate on today. And no one had mercy on he who have mercy. No one was gracious to he who is gracious to men. No one saw a man in him who should be given a reprieve. They saw a man who should be killed. And surely he was beaten. And he was crucified. His blood didn't start to drip and run out of his body when he was on the cross. From the time he was arrested, he endured the beating and the tearing of his body. All that was done to fulfill the Father's love. The Father whom on his suffering took joy. Because that which he gave him for, it was being brought into fulfillment. That he should die the death of being offered a sacrifice for the whole of mankind. He is the manifestation of the Father's love to us. And the death that he died, in comparison to the shadow of atonement, 
na mapungu achifumero kana murunzi wa chifumero he died once of faluti and for all achifera bote that's why it is written ndinga zvozvongwariwa in hebrew chapter 10 verse 14 for by one sacrifice he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Oh my God. By one offering he has perfected forever those who have been sanctified. Who are these who have been sanctified? It is you who have believed in him. To attain your salvation. It is you who have been perfected by the word of God. Who are being sanctified by the water of the word of God. This sanctification is continuing. But perfection has been accomplished. By this one sacrifice of this one man who died on that rugged cross. Who died out of the love of humanity. Offered only once. In atonement. There was a repetition on a yearly basis. And in atonement. High priests changed. At this Jesus. He came as a high priest. And when he came to die, he did not enter the tabernacle or a temple made by man or human hands. No, he ascended to heaven. He ascended to heaven with his blood and enter in the temple of God in the presence of God once and for all. This is the man whose blood was really shed. It was shed to accomplish a great purpose in humanity. And two things I want to highlight to you about his blood which was shed on Calvary. It is that his blood it was different from the blood of the beasts that were slaughtered. Whose blood was meant to cover the sin of Israel. But his blood is meant for the redemption of the whole of mankind. For as I speak now, the people who have attained salvation, redemption from God, are people of all nations of the world. For that reason, the scriptures indicate that 
In him we have found redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his glory. This is Ephesians 1, 7 and 8. This blood is special. It is the blood of the Son of God, and not the blood of the beasts, the creation of God. But this is the blood of the Creator. He who was with God in the beginning. He who is God. He whom when God said, let us make man. He was also talking to him. His blood is perfect blood. The blood of the lamb that is without blemish. So his blood. It is meant for our salvation. In this blood. We find our redemption. And this blood. Is no ordinary blood. The spirit of the Lord in 1 Peter 1, 18 to 22 indicates that. Knowing that you were redeemed with you were not redeemed with corruptible things. Like silver and gold. From your aimless conduct by traditions from your fathers. Verse 19 says. But with the precious blood of Christ. Beloved, the blood of Jesus which was shed on the day we commemorate today, it is precious blood, as of a lamb without blemish, without spot, which the governor pronounced Three times of this man saying he find nothing wrong with him. Pilate said that. He see no fault with him. In the man without any fault. Come the precious blood. And the only blood which have got the capacity to redeem man. And also to cleanse man of his iniquities. For the death that he died. He died to sin once and for all. Concerning this blood and the shedding of it and the offering of Christ in verse 20 of the same first Peter the Bible say he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world. But was manifest in these last times for you. Beloved, it is for you. It is for us that this blood was shed. That we be cleansed of our iniquities when we believe in Jesus and that he really died 
and was raised from the dead. This Jesus, the Father planned it before the creation of the world and made sure that this is brought into manifestation in the now. Beloved, you who have found grace by believing Jesus and becoming God's righteousness, you made no mistake. But whoever may be listening to this word, having not believed Jesus, to his confession, that he is Lord and Savior, because you are still alive, you are not late. You are still counted in. If on hearing this word, common sense may knock in your soul to the understanding that it was also for you that this blood was shed. And this is no ordinary blood. And remember this. The death that he died, he died once. And he will not die again. And this blood which was shed, he took his blood to heaven so that this blood may be applicable for whoever may believe. So if you are hearing this word today, salvation is free for you. You can be cleansed of your iniquity. But should you resist this, it is not God who will be doing injustice to you. For God loved you. It will be you who would be doing injustice to yourself by not accepting him. He, this Christ, whose plan for salvation was foreordained by the Father. And was manifested in these times for you and me. Who through him believed in God. Who raised him from the dead and gave him glory. So that your faith and hope are in God. This blood is precious blood. It is the blood of our redemption. It is the blood of our salvation. John was not joking. On seeing him coming, and when he exclaimed, Behold the Lamb of God that carries the sin of the world. He did not carry the sin of the Jews. It is not for the Jews only that he died. He did not enter into the Jewish temple for his death. He was led outside the city with his blood being shed so that we may be cleansed of our sins and be presented before the Father through this way. The Lord Jesus Christ who himself 
exclaimed. I am the way. The truth and the life. So this is the way of the blood. His blood which was shed for me and you. So that we may be cleansed. For our iniquities. When we believe him. And believe God. This is real. He was offered once and forever. In his death. He carried our sins. In his death. His blood cleanses us of our sins. He looked so ugly before the Father. Because of our sins. So much that. Even when he cried. The Father couldn't look at him. His cry on that cross was a cry of help from the Father. And the Father couldn't attend to him. Guess what? He was bleeding at that time. With this blood which is precious blood. And the sacrifice he offered once. For our sins forever. You righteousness of God. As you live this life undergoing perfection and undergoing sanctity by the word of God. Don't be ignorant of this grace. It came once. And for all. And this blood. It cleanses us of all sin. When we give ourselves to God. And when we confess our sins. He is faithful. To forgive us of them all. How wonderful God is. For loving us that much. To give us such a gift in Christ. The shedding of the blood. Which is precious blood. The second thing which this blood is capable of doing. It is seen in one of the important shadows to his death. That of the Passover. When the Lord was preparing the children of Israel for their departure from the then Egypt that had enslaved them. The crust of their salvation was in the Passover. The first one that they held, which was a shadow of the death of Christ on the cross. I won't elaborate this which appears in Exodus chapter 12. But when uh, without blemish were 
recognize taken and killed at pre-life concerning the blood this is what has been said in verse 22 and 23 those are people who were in their household who were told not to leave their houses. They were instructed. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop. Dip it in the blood. The blood that is in the basin. And strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the doorpost, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses and strike you. This blood, it served a good purpose then. It was the blood of the lambs. But the blood of Jesus, it is precious blood. Now me and you are facing the situation of a lockdown in our own country. Because the destroyer is out in the whole world. That this destroyer respects no man. And that this destroyer respects no households. In my country, government said we should stay in the houses to eliminate its spread and its power. And they did a wonderful thing. But beloved, if the blood of the ship saved Israel from the destroyer, what more could the blood of Jesus Christ do to us? If we take this blood by faith in God and apply it primarily in our household, when we are still locked like this, I want to tell you, you may say a wonder. Because as the destroyer is moving, it is not yet known as to its capacity of spread. It is still only known that it can be spread through liquid evaporation. And nobody knows as to whether it is a born or what. 
But here we have with the precious blood. He took with him his blood to heaven. So that in the time of need, this same blood we may access. Beloved, by faith in God, take this precious blood, apply it on yourself, apply it on your household, and when you do that, don't be ignorant also. And just get out and walk around as if nothing can happen to you. Because the protocols that were instituted by government, I don't think they are outside the will of God. For that reason, I urge you, if it worked for Israel, through the blood which was not precious blood, how much more will this work? If in your prayers you take this blood and apply it in the name of Jesus Christ. Apply it on yourself. Apply it on your household. So that this destroyer may not catch you. But if you can be prideful and not follow the governmental protocols and not take the blood, you can be one of the statistics of those who will be buried. But this blood is free to those who humble themselves seeking God's mercy. This blood can work for us all. I determined it that this blood I apply it on my household as I'm on lockdown. But as I come to you, we must go beyond that. We must take this blood and apply it in a nation. Apply this blood in our country so that God may have mercy even to the people who do not uphold him. Because this blood is precious blood. It covers so that when the destroyer comes, he doesn't enter to destroy where the blood is applied. If it did not destroy where it was applied then, when that blood was inferior blood, uh, the blood of Jesus is superior blood, capable to cover his people. May this blood cover you where you are. I take this blood by faith from the heavenly place where Christ sits 
I apply it on my country in the name of Jesus. And I apply it on believers wherever you are in the name of Jesus. This blood is not in the refrigerator in somebody's house. This blood is not on sale somewhere. This blood he went into heaven with it so that we may access it in the hour of need. This blood it is still fresh blood. Brethren, as we commemorate the death, the shed blood of Jesus Christ, let's take advantage of this one good thing which took place that day. The shedding of his blood. Also for our redemption. From the might of the destroyer that respects no man. I pray to God in the name of Jesus. That if we can access this blood. Humble ourselves and do it. God can save our country. He can save our household. He can save our children. He can heal those who are affected. He can be merciful on us. Wherever we are. I know that. You are listening to me talking to you. Here in South Africa. In Botswana. Botswana. In Zimbabwe. Kala Zimbabwe. In Zambia. Zambia. In Tanzania. Tanzania. In the United States. United States. Wherever you are. Where the destroyer is moving. The destroyer is not more powerful than the precious blood of Jesus Christ. But this precious blood. Can save us. I do plead with you now. You who had nothing to do with Christ. And you who had nothing to do with his blood. Today. You can call on his name. For your redemption through his blood. And you can take this blood and apply it on yourself and humble yourself for the humbling soul who can act in this way which sounds so stupid. They shall see grace. Grace to you.